Now guys, let's take a look at the Google Messages. And as you know, it's an app from Google that used to be called Google Hangouts, but now it's just Google Messages or Google Chat. And let me just show you how it works in case it's new for you and because you're not familiar with it. At first, you need to go ahead and go to the App Store and just look it up. Just type in Google Chat. I, I believe that even if you type in in Google Messages, you're going to be able to get it. So it's the first app. They are like the green chat bubbles and it is the default messaging app for android users but you can also get it on the iphone as well so the first step is to download it and open it up and the very first thing you need to do is to get started with the google account like it is obvious you're not going to be able to go around it because it is basically a google app so only google accounts are just going to be acceptable What's interesting, however, is that if you have ever used Google Hangouts in the past, it didn't really disappear. It's not like those chats are now gone. They have just been moved over to Google Messages and it's just the same thing, but on a different platform. So if you forget about it, just like I did, you can browse through your old chats and it's kind of funny to see all the things that you chatted with or talked about a couple of years in the past. Anyways, you can start a new chat by clicking on the new chat icon and what this is gonna use is just the Google messages, right? As I told you, and you have logged in with your Google and Gmail account. So you can only contact others that you have their gmails so it's not like you use your phone number on whatsapp you need to know others phone number to contact them through whatsapp on google chat you need to know their gmail address as well as your own and that's how you can connect so it's a different principle but this this is how it works if you then select the person you want to chat with, at that point, it is pretty straightforward because it behaves like a regular uh, text messenger. But there is a difference with the fact that you don't really have any text messages bubble because you can send something, but it both appears on the left side, which in my opinion, isn't convenient at all. Like I really love the way it appears on basically any messenger platform, whether you use iMessage, Facebook Messenger or whatever, then it just has like a different user interface where the texts you send are on the right side, like indicating that it is your voice and the texts you receive are on the left side. Here you don't have that dynamic, which is uh, kind of something I don't really like. It kind of saddens me a bit, but yeah, if you want to use it, you can still go through it. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't break the experience too much. Now, let me walk you through some of the features you have within a Google chat. Well, you can, of course, type in the basic text. You have the icon for emojis, but it's basically the same thing as if you were using the Apple's keyboard to access emojis, so nothing really that new. And you can also send photos, but that's basic stuff. However, if you click on the plus icon and next to the text field, multiple different options are going to pop up. So it includes the photos, camera, and GIF. That is the basic stuff. It happens or is available at every platform, but you also have the Meet link. And Google Meet is like the video call a website or an app from Google. So it makes sense that it is deeply integrated within the Google chats. It just makes sense. So you can just send the link right away or you can access the Google Drive and your files right inside it so that's really cool as well because if you use some different messaging platform and want to share something on google drive you have to go there and copy the link and make sure that you get a share it that you have the permissions here you can just type it in click on the file whatever and he just sends it right away then you also have the files but files it just moves you over to your apple files so you can send a, a different thing whatever you want you also have the calendar so that's really interesting because it moves you over to the google calendar and it just only confirms how deeply or how well the systems are integrated which is a side tangent but i want to say that if you are deeply into the google um ecosystem that means that you use google calendar that you use google meet for video calls and conferences and whatnot then it makes only like more sense to use the google chat it just does okay but the other features are 
uh, the formatting features, which you don't really have available on many platforms. And that is the ability to make text bold or to make it cursive, underline, strike through, whatever you want. I'm not sure how helpful or how useful it is in the context of messaging, in the context of quick replies and messages, but she can do it. And it's something that Google probably wanted to differentiate from like different platforms. So that's uh, really uh, something that you don't have on many different places. Okay, but let me conclude my video right here. And I really trust that you have enjoyed this content. And I hope that you found it both informative and valuable. If this has been the case, I would kindly request your support by expressing your appreciation through the positive engagement, for example, letting a like or subscribing to the esteemed Fox Tech YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you in the future. Peace out, guys.